Okay, this is one of those things when we look at endurance versus the equal, I think for a lot of students, and I, I, I don't be honest, I feel like we do the same thing. We just see them as the same thing. Saying that two things are equal and saying that two things are equal, pretty much means the same thing. And I would say, yeah, kind of. Yeah. Well, no, it, let's just look at their symbol. For equals, it is literally just two bars that mean equal, right? And then to put the congruence, just you've made this little skill bit on top of it, correct? Okay, but what if I just look at just the PLA all by itself? What does that mean in geometry? No. If I look at just the tilde, it means that they are similar, Taylor. The tilde, when we talk about geometry, it means that the two things are similar. If it's similar, that it means that their corresponding parts are proportional. But now, when we put these two things together, when I take similarity and I mix that with equality, I now have what we call congruence. It means not just that the two things are equal, so they can be equal in measure, but it doesn't mean that they are congruent. To be congruent, means that all of your corresponding parts line up. And then all of your corresponding parts are congruent. They're the same length, they're the same orientation. Okay, that's basically what congruence means. It is like the difference between being friends and being BFFs. It is a much stronger bond to say that two things are congruent rather than saying that two things are equal. Okay, that is so philosophically, that's how much you have to look at much stronger bond. Now what's important about this is we can't do any arithmetic with congruence. You cannot do any operations with congruence. Ever. So a lot of times we have to do a geometric proofs is we have to go from congruence back to equals and we do that from the definition of congruence that I'm going to go through later on today. So someone remind me, what does segment addition postulate? Let's talk about number four in this class. What does segment addition postulate? What does it say? Help me see if you go on the stick. Give a foundational concept in this course. It's a little phrase that we said over and over in this class. Yeah, the sum of the parts equals the whole. And so geometrically, we talk about the segment addition postulate. We get AB plus BC, the sum of my parts, is equal to the whole. Now, guys, when we do geometric proofs, there's going to be a lot of definitions that can be used in reasoning. Right, Taylor? A lot of definitions. And I can't teach you all the definitions. Possible for me to teach you all the definitions. You have to understand that take things right out of meaning. What does it mean to be the midpoint? Well, what does it mean geometrically? What if I told you that B was the midpoint of AC? What does that tell you? It's where the end meets. Now, somewhere in between. Right in the middle of AC. Okay, so what does that tell you about A, B, and BC? They're equal. So if I told you that B is the midpoint of AC, and therefore you reason that AB must be equal to BC, what would be your reasoning for that? How do you know that to be true? That came out of the definition of midpoint. Okay, that's one of the things we're gonna just deal with. That there are these definitions that are out there and we can use those as reasoning. So let's say a look at our first proof. <coughs> and we are gonna try to keep things very simplistic for the moment. I'm gonna use them right now so I'm good. Oh. All right, so what are we given? Uh, AB is congruent to X, Y, and BC is congruent to Y, Z. What are we trying to prove? We're trying to prove that it's just equal to B. No, we're all trying to prove. AC is congruent to X. Oh, okay, so that's what we're trying to prove. All right, first line of any proof is always given. 
What changed from line one to line two? Anytime we switch congruence to equal or equal to congruence, anytime we make that switch, that is called definition of congruence. Also known as def of R. Definition of congruence. Anytime we make the switch from congruence to equal, it's def of R. All right, then we're going to line three. What's going on on line three? So the whole AC is equal to AB. Well, what is that? Why is that true? That's the segment addition postulate. It's a natural reason. <coughs> yeah, you are allowed to repeat me. Yeah, I got a poke. Segment, would I be adding one? Uh, yeah, that's one. Good one. From line four to line five, what do we do? That substitution. Caleb, how did I substitute? Uh, what about line six? Yeah, what did I substitute that time? So in this case, I took the AC, typically the AB plus BC. All right, and I pretty much have my proof done, right? Except for, I don't want to know if AC is equal to XB. I want to show that AC is congruent. All right, so anytime we switch from congruence to equal, the equal to congruence is called? Def of R. Yes, so we completed a two column proof. Yeah, you guys can guess your way through this. It's similar to any type of puzzle, like a, almost like a crossword. Okay, well, why is this? You put it here, put that there, and then we're done. But it doesn't actually teach you guys how to do a proof. Because at some point, you guys have to basically do your own proof. So I want us to look at this, and I want to go through the logic of why these statements are in the order they are. Because it's really, really important with this particular problem. Again, the first line of any proof is always yeah, given. Yeah. All right, that's easy. Always start with your givens. You're setting up the problem. Here's my given. You're setting up the problem. What are you asked to do? I got to prove it. Now, a lot of you guys, when you do homework challenges, a lot of you guys are asking the first question. Well, if I need to do that, then the next question should be logically, then what is AC? And what is XZ? Right? Well, that's all line three and four are doing. You're asking that question. Then, okay, if that's what I need to prove, then what is AC? What is XZ? And then AC is pretty obvious. AC is AB plus BC. Line four. XZ is XY plus YZ. So we have defined what those two terms are. Now the next ask is, how do I go from here? What can I do mathematically to 
to go from their definition to get down to line six. And that's what line five is all about. It's all about the substitutions taking place to get them there. But those are the questions you need to start asking yourself when you're doing the quiz. So what does that mean? Why did I do that? What do I need to do next? What do I need to find next? Those are the types of questions that you need to keep asking over and over again in order to do proofs for very long. All right, let's look at another one. 